Welcome to the Pediatric Advanced Life Support Chapter on Shock in Children. Shock is a serious condition that can be life-threatening, and it occurs when there is inadequate blood flow and therefore an inadequate supply of oxygen in the body. Lack of oxygen to the peripheral tissues and organs causes them to stop functioning properly and may quickly lead to death. There are four types of shock that occur in children, which we will look at more in depth. And these are hypervolemic shock, distributive shock, cardiogenic shock, and obstructive shock. The first type is hypovolemic shock, which is a dangerously low blood plasma volume, meaning a low oxygen carrying capacity. Hypovolemia is the most common cause of shock in children, and it's mainly due to fluid loss. Hypovolemia can be identified by decreased preload, increased or normal contractility, and an increased afterload. Hypovolemic shock can be caused by diarrhea, vomiting, decreased fluid consumption, osmotic diuresis, fluid accumulating in extracellular space known as third spacing, burns, or hemorrhages. Children experiencing hypovolemic shock may show the following signs tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, weak or absent peripheral pulses, normal or weak central pulses, cool or cold pale skin, decreased mental status, low urine output, or delayed capillary refill. To properly manage hypovolemic shock, first diagnose if the child is suffering from non-hemorrhagic or hemorrhagic hypovolemic shock. If they show signs of non-hemorrhagic hypovolemia, the key to treating this form of shock is the infusion and retention of fluids. Administering fluids properly and quickly is an essential treatment for the best possible outcome and leads to a faster recovery. To treat a child in non-hemorrhagic hypovolemic shock, an infusion of 12 milligrams per kilogram bolus of isotonic crystalloid is effective, with up to three boluses administered if the patient does not improve. If the child shows signs of hemorrhagic hypovolemic shock, start with a fast infusion of isotonic crystalloid in boluses of 12 milligrams per kilograms and give up to three boluses for a total of 60 milligrams per kilograms. For every one milliliter of blood loss, it is important to supplement three milliliters of crystalloid in the initial treatment. If the patient remains unresponsive, then consider a transfusion of packed red blood cells in 10 milligrams per kilograms boluses. There are no pharmacological interventions that are effective for hemorrhagic or non-hemorrhagic hypovolemic shock. So treatment therapy includes fluid dosage, identifying the cause of blood volume loss, and correcting metabolic imbalance. This concludes our first video on shock in children Please proceed to the next video to learn more.